In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. In a resplendent cloud, the Holy Spirit appeared on this holy mountain. The Father's voice was heard, This is my beloved Son, with whom I'm well pleased. Let us ask the Lord to transform us as we are going back to our places that we may share the good news that we experienced in this holy land. In order to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our failures and ask for God's pardon and His grace. <coughs> I confess to so Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The glory. Oh, my God. 
transfiguration of your only begotten Son, he had confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, the Father, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship. Grant, we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, 
the word of the Lord. before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid because Jesus came, but Jesus came and touched them saying, rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from this mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, we come to the end of our pilgrimage together as a group on this high mountain where Jesus climbed with his disciples after suffering the first rejection of God, of the Son of God, of the Lord of Lords, by these same disciples at the foot of the cross, at the, at the foot of the mountain. Jesus, at the foot of the mountain, 
had given his third and final <laughs> prophecy about going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man being handed over and crucified, dying on the cross and rising on the third day. And we hear Peter saying that this should never happen to him. Immediately Jesus responds to that by telling him to get behind him and names him Satan because it was no longer flesh and blood that was speaking but the enemy of God who had found his way through Peter and Jesus identifies him and says get behind me Satan. When that happens, Peter is insistent that he would never deny the Lord, that he would even lay down his life for the Master. And again he is told that three times, before the cock crows, you would have rejected me three times. And we are told that one by one, the disciples said to the Lord, we will never reject you, one by one. And yet when it came to it, some denied him, one sold him out, Others ran away except one. It's the first time in the three years that Jesus had been with them that his word had been rejected by his own. Perhaps that brought him to his lowest end. That made him depressed because his prayer, as you know, at that time was summed up in chapter 17 of the Gospel of John. And it was a prayer that spoke directly to the Father about how he has kept those that he had been given by the Father, and how these had believed the word that he had preached, he had given them. How he wanted, at the end of it all, to have them where he is, and to see the glory given him by the Father. How pleased he was with this group. Yet it is this group that rejects his word. The word that says you will, you will all run away. You will, I will be left alone. You will deny me. One by one they say, no, we will not. Jesus facing this rejection can only turn to the Father. And he climbs this mountain with them. And I am sure just coming up this mountain you could see that to get here there was a price that he, that he had to pay. That walking up is no mean feat. 
that it is one of the most difficult uh, things to do. The, 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 the climb is so steep and it takes a lot of endurance and a lot of perseverance to come to this point. When he comes to the top of this mountain, he asks his disciples, the majority of them, to stay back and moves forward with these famous three. And it is in that context that he begins to throw himself to the one and only one who will always believe the word of the Son because it is the word of the Father. He throws himself into the hands of his dad. He throws himself into the hands of Abba. And his prayer reminds us of that prayer of Moses in the tent of meeting. Because in, the, in those moments of encounter between man and God in that tent of meeting, we are told that Moses would come out of the tent of meeting with his face glowing with the glory of God. And people would implore him to hide his face. Jesus is in prayer. Something begins to happen. He begins to shine with the glory that belongs to him to the Eternal One, the glory of the Father, the glory that has been given Him, the glory that He thanks the Father for. And as He shines, we are told that the three disciples begin to marvel. It is so good for us to be here. They are three, they are, they are, they are witnesses of, of the Old Testament there. We hear of Moses and Elijah, men who were familiar with these great encounters with the living one. Moses shining with the glory of God. Elijah again on that mountain experiencing that that gentle breeze and hiding his face because at that moment he knew that the Holy One was in his midst, was, was present. He covered his face. Jesus begins to shine. Perhaps the invitation each time we come to this mountain is for us to shine with the glory of God. Nothing less. We are invited on this mountain to be men and women who desire to shine with the glory of God. And remember that it will never happen until and unless each and every one of us become radically men and women of prayer. Men and women of deep, deep, deep prayer. When we go and visit monasteries, I love to go and see the poor clares. I am beginning to find joy to move up higher and go and see the Carmelite uh, cloistered nuns in Mutare. Why do I love going to see them? Because each time I look at their faces, I am reminded of the glory of the transfigured Lord. Their faces speak so loudly about the God that they are encountering about how their life is not a waste, about the things that 
are happening as they remain cut off. They are brought into the presence of God and they become the living reminders of what can happen to each and every one of us if we are faithfully surrendered to God in our prayer. Prayer is a full-time job. Prayer is a relationship that needs to be developed, natured daily. Prayer is a friendship between a person and his God. Prayer is our way to enter into the presence of God, into the Holy of Holies, and let the Holy of Holies encounter us. Kaurana says some things will never be known by touching them. Holy things will be known by allowing ourselves to be touched by them. When we enter into these moments of transfiguration, moments of deep prayer, God touches us. God transforms us. God changes us. God draws us into himself and shows the world that we don't belong to the world. I want us to take careful note of the words that are uttered by the Father. The Father in the life of Jesus speaks publicly three times. First, at his baptism, he says, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. <coughs> and my joy, my glory lies on him. This is the one in whom I am well pleased. But the second time we it said the transfiguration. And because Jesus has been rejected, his word has been rejected by the disciples at the foot of the mountain, the father turns and says, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. <coughs> Don't reject his word. Listen. Perhaps we need to hear that again and again that we are called to listen to the word that has been spoken to us. Listen. And the third time Jesus says, glorify the Son. And there is the word that cries out, I have glorified it. The Father speaks three times to Jesus. Today he has spoken to not only Jesus, but to us. He is mine listen. And in the measure that we are, we are able to listen, in that same measure are we able to be transformed, are we able to be transfigured. Today as we go, the mission is to make transfiguration our own. We are not called to remain as we are. The mission is to become who God is, to shine with his glory, to show the world that, as St. Paul says it, we are shining like stars with the glory of God. And so let's pray that our prayer may make us men and women who so encounter God to the point of being transfigured. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Without end, we are claimed. Holy, 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 by sending down your spirit upon them like the jewel, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. It when we is not, it is not. He has risen from the dead. He is not. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that he.
death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <coughs> we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. <coughs> And bring it to the fullness of charity, <coughs> together with Francis, our Pope, our Patriarch, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Of mercy on us, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints. We have pleased you throughout the ages. May merit request your eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, our God, our mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we get to say our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every <coughs> evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Yes. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my mind, but we say the word, and my soul shall be. The body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.